Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at some ways of estimating area underneath a graph. And so we're going to take a look at this table. And we've got a car that's traveling, and its speed is never decreasing. So I've got a monotonically increasing function during a 12-second interval. And we've got speed at various moments in this table here. And uh, 0, 3, 6, 9, and 12 seconds. And so that's always going up. And so there's a possible graph for this function here. You could connect these dots and say that's a possible graph for this function. My x-axis is labeled as time, and my y-axis is labeled in feet per second. So what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to do something called a Riemann sum. George Bernard Riemann was a German mathematician who developed this process of trying to find area under a curve. And we're going to start off by using four rectangles drawn at the heights of the left endpoints. And we're going to call this a left Riemann sum because we're using the left endpoints. So this is how this is going to look. And you're going to take a look at um, four rectangles would be one drawn from 0 to 3, another one from 3 to 6, 6 to 9, and 9 to 12. So here's my very first rectangle. We're going to pick the left endpoint, which would be 0. Between 0 and 3, 0 is on the left and 3 is on your right. Hold up your left hand. You know, the left hand makes the L. And so I'm going to draw the height of my rectangle is going to come from that endpoint. And I'm going to make my rectangle by dropping it straight down here. So there's my first rectangle. My second rectangle will be from 3 to 6. And we're going to draw it from the height of 3 up here to 37. This is on the left. On the interval from 3 to 6, the height of 37 is on the left and the height of 45 is on the right. So this rectangle will look like this, straight across and then down to 6. And then the next one will look like this using from 6 to 9. 6 is on the left of 9 so we use the height at 6. And then from 9 to 12 we use the height at 9 straight across. So the areas of this rectangle let's, well, we'll interpret it after we find the areas here. The areas of each one of these rectangles would be 3. I'm going to go ahead and use units on this first example so you can tell why it works out to be distance traveled. It's, I have 3 seconds. I'm going to have my pen here. Sorry about the little wait there. Get to my pen. There we go. So I've got 3 seconds. I lost my little pin here. I've got my icon as an arrow, and it bothers me, but we're going to see how it goes anyway. So I've got three seconds. That's going to be the width of this rectangle, and my height is 30. So I'm going to multiply that times 30, and the 30 is in feet per second. Now that's the area of this first rectangle, and when you multiply three seconds times 30 feet per second, the seconds cancel, and you get feet. So that's why area under the curve of a speed graph will give you total distance traveled. So let's go through and add the rectangle from 3 to 6. I've got a width of 3 and a height of, how tall was this? Well, we use the left end point, 3 is on the left between 3 and 6, of 37. And then the next rectangle would be 3 times 45. And then my last rectangle would be 3 times 54. And we're going to leave it like that. That's my left Riemann sum. If we have a calculator, we could punch it all in, but that's a left Riemann sum. Now we're going to do a right Riemann sum. Now a right Riemann sum is we're going to draw the graph, and we're going to use right-hand endpoints instead of left-hand endpoints. So I'm going to erase what I have so far, and I'm going to show you how to draw right-hand endpoints. So let me get to my little eraser here. <laughs> do, 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 do. I didn't mean to erase that three down there. I should have just drawn another graph here, but you know, you live and learn. Alright, so let's get back to my pen. Give this a three again. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw our rectangles using the right-hand endpoints. So my first rectangle was also a 30 there. My first rectangle is going to come from the right-hand endpoint. Between 0 and 3, 3 is on the right. So I'm going to go up to 37 from 3, and I'm going to go straight across. That's going to be my very first rectangle. And then my second rectangle is using the right-hand endpoint over here at 6, straight across. And then up from 9, 
Sorry that that got a little curvy there. Straight across, and then up from 12, which is way up there, and then straight across. And so this is a right-hand endpoint. So my estimation is going to be width times height. That's going to be 3 times 37 plus 3. Now my next rectangle is a width of 3 and the height of 45 and then plus 3 times 54 plus 3 times 65. And I'm going to stop right there. That is my right-hand Riemann sum. I added up the areas of these four rectangles, and the rectangle's heights were determined by the function values on the right-hand side. Okay, so I think I'm going to draw another graph here for, to go down here for a midpoint. So bear with me here as we try this again. So we're going to draw our graph. We've got a 0, 3, 6, 9, and then 12. All right, and then we also had, so we were at 30, and then 37, and then we were at 45, 54, and 65. Obviously, this is my scale. I, I drew the graph. I get to pick the scale. All right, so 0 were at 30, 3 were at 37, 6 were at 45, 9 were at 54, and 12 were at 65. Okay, now this says draw two rectangles. Now, two rectangles would mean I'd need a width of 6 for my first rectangle and another width of 6. I'm very sorry about the bell. Need another width of 6. And then it says midpoint. I've got to do a midpoint remont sum. That means that my first interval is from 0 to 6. 0 would be a left endpoint. 6 is a right endpoint. Midpoint is halfway between. So I'm going to go halfway between 0 and 6. I'm going to go up to my graph, and this is going to determine the height of my rectangle. There's my very first rectangle. And then again, for my second interval from 6 to 12, 9 is halfway between 6 and 12. It's the midpoint. So I'm going to let that determine my height. Now I realize it looks like that I'm drawing several rectangles, but I just wanted to go up to the curve from there. I have two, this is my first rectangles from 0 to 6 and my second rectangles from 6 to 12. Let's erase that line so you can see it a little better. That line really doesn't need to be there. There we go. Get back to my pen. fix this. Okay, so the heights of my rectangles were determined by the midpoint function values. So my estimate estimation is going to be 6 times 37. I've got a width of 6 and the height of 37 plus 6 times 54. That is my midpoint remont sum. Alright, so let's go take a look at a graph of y equals x squared plus 1 and we're going to determine or estimate the area from 0 to 2 by using a left Riemann sum with n equals 4 equal subintervals. Now here this is different. I've not been told how many rectangles to use. I just have to figure this out and there's this nifty little formula that tells you delta x by the way is going to be the width of your rectangle and this is always b minus a over n. So for my rectangles here my a and my b are 0 to 2 so I'm going to have 2 minus 0. n is the number of e or, or my subintervals. n is 4. So I guess they did tell me how many rectangles to use. They just didn't draw it out for me in a table. This tells me that I need to go by 1 half. So my width of each rectangle is going to be 1 half. That's what we didn't know, the width of each rectangle. So I'm going to start at 0, go to 1 half, then go to 1 and then three halves, and then finally out to two. And so I get from zero to two by widths of halves with four equal subintervals. And my graph is x squared plus one. So I'm just going to graph that. That's a, this little parabola looking thing that's gone up one. So this would be a one here. So left Riemann sum would be, look at the first interval is zero to one half, draw a rectangle, but using the left hand endpoint. So there's my first one. And then my second one is right here. My third one's right here. 
and my fourth one's right here. So I'm using I'm using points on the graph, but left hand endpoints. So my first Riemann sum is going to be one half times. Now, what is the height of this rectangle? The height of this rectangle was whatever zero plugged into the function is. My f of x is x squared plus one. So I plug zero in because zero is on the left hand endpoint. It's on the left hand side of zero and one half. So I plug that into my equation, and I'm just going to write zero squared plus one. And then plus, my next rectangle has a width of one half, but what's the height? The height was determined from the left-hand endpoint, so we plug one half in for x, and that's one half squared plus one. And then my third rectangle has a width of one half, and then we plug. What do we plug into the function? Well, the, it's right here. This is the height off the curve. This is the height that was determined by plugging in one to x. And the reason we plugged in 1 is because we were on the interval from 1 to 3 halves, 1's on the left. So I would write 1 squared plus 1, and my last one would equal 1 half times 3 halves squared plus 1. That would be a left hand, or a left Riemann sum. Sometimes they're called a left hand, just so you're thinking left and right, but that's a left Riemann sum. And unless I have a calculator, I'm leaving it just like that. I've really butchered that too, sorry. That is my Riemann sum, widths and heights. Now we're going to do a right Riemann sum. and I'm going to use my fancy little eraser to erase what I just did. Actually, that's going to be, let me get a smaller circle. Yeah, I'm happier with that. Do, 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 do. I need like elevator music while you guys are waiting on me. Go get a drink or something. Get some chips. Tell your mom you love her. Honestly, somebody do it and tell me tomorrow that you actually did what I said. <laughs> okay. Dad's too. Tell your dad you love him. Okay. <laughs> la, la. All right. Sorry about that. And now we're back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a right Riemann sum. So my first interval is from 0 to 1 half. And so I'm going to go up to the curve at 1 half because 1 half is on the right and then straight across to the left. And then up to the curve at 1 straight across to the left and then up to the curve at three halves straight across to the left and then up to the curve at two straight across to the left there is my right hand Riemann sum and so let's or well, at least as a picture let's write out what it would be the first rectangle has a width of one half and the height of one half squared plus one because we plug one half in for x into x squared plus one. And then plus one half times, there's my second one, the height came from plugging one into the function. And then plus one half times three halves squared plus one. And then plus one half times two squared plus one. We're leaving it like that. All right, midpoint Riemann sum. I'm going to erase again. Doo -doo -doo. get rid of all this stuff here. Now a midpoint Riemann sum means we need to get in the middle of our intervals and it still says we want four subintervals so I'm still going to keep my graph separated like I have it. But now I need to find the endpoints. So what are the, I'm sorry, the midpoints. My midpoints are halfway between the interval. What's halfway between zero and one half? Well of course that is one fourth. So I'm going to go up to the curve at 1 fourth and let that determine the height of my first rectangle. Halfway between 1 half and 1 is 3 fourths. So I'll go up to the curve at 3 fourths and I will create a rectangle that's that tall. And then my next one, halfway between 1 and 3 halves is 5 fourths. Up to the curve, make a rectangle that tall. And then the last one, of course, is 7 fourths. Up to the curve, make a rectangle that tall. All right, so let's write it out so that we can be done with this. My width, what's my width? My width is still 1 half. But what did I plug in? I plugged in the midpoint into the function. So that would be 1 fourth squared plus 1. And then 1 half, my second, is still 1 half a width. 
what, what I plugged in was a 3 fourths into the function, so that's 3 fourths squared plus 1, and then plus 1 half times 5 fourths squared plus 1, and then 1 half times 7 fourths squared plus 1. And that is my midpoint Riemann sum. I'm leaving it like that. I'll see you guys tomorrow.